Guys, what's up? So, thought I'd show you uh, a Dell uh, R710 server. Uh, this is a project I'm working on for a customer. Um, I'm going to be consolidating 12 old HP servers into uh, two of these R710 servers. So, we're going to be running uh, VMware 6.0 Update 2. Uh, it's a Dell version of it. So, Dell puts out their own version of VMware, and it's specific for uh, Dell servers. And one of the nice things about that version is it actually has all the ec extra drivers and utilities, mainly like a uh, network card, uh, RAID controller, and etc. But this is actually going to have uh, I have two of these servers. I've already built one of them, the primary server, and this is going to be a secondary backup server to backup SQL Server and a couple of their web servers and uh, maybe a couple of domain controllers. But it's going to have uh, there's four two terabyte drives in here. But I'm actually going to have two uh, RAID 1 uh, 2 terabyte drives. So there's going to be, a, you know, one container is going to be 2 terabytes, the second container is going to be 2 terabytes. But I'm not sure if you guys have ever messed with the Dell R710 server, but it's a freaking awesome server. It's super quiet, energy efficient. And uh, let me show you this one, pop the case cover off. Um, this has been far, so far, been my favorite server for virtualization. It's uh, this this server um, you can actually get them on pretty cheap on eBay now for a couple hundred bucks, but they're awesome servers. It's uh, this one's a dual uh, quad core, and uh, when they when Dell built the server, designed the server, they actually designed it for virtualization, and you can tell that because uh, look how many memory slots there is. Right now this has 64 gigs in it, but uh, I mean you could totally scale this thing way up, and that should be a Perk Six RAID controller. Uh, dual power supplies back here and the cool thing is it actually has four built-on NICs or four onboard NICs um, they're Broadcom NICs so they're not my favorite I, I would have preferred uh, Intel based NICs but you can tell by the chipset right there that they're a Broadcom but, uh, so yeah I'm gonna get this thing loaded up and uh, these are great servers you can get them for pretty cheap now so yeah, it's telling me there's a case up, cases up, and and uh, oh shit, there's no uh, no CD-ROM on this thing, so I guess I'm gonna have to uh, load this on a USB stick. All right, cool. My uh, VMware on this uh, USB stick. This thing obviously didn't have a DVD player or CD-ROM, so I'm gonna get this thing going and uh, create these uh, RAID containers. But yeah, this is actually an ultra quiet server compared to like these uh, HP servers I'm replacing this thing with. Um, yeah, I currently actually use uh, Dell R710s for my own stuff using VMware. So great servers. All right, Let's see that, but I'm on the uh, the RAID configuration page here. And so I've already created the containers, and actually instead of that, I'm going to create one RAID 1, uh, two terabyte drives, and I'm going to create two backup disks, one and two. So I decided not to do like the RAID second RAID do, you know, like a mirrored backup volume. It's going to do like individual disk. But uh, all right, next step. You can see this a little bit better. I uh, close the doors. So you can see it. So I hit F11, so I can choose. A, I'm going to choose a cruiser, the USB drive. See if thing will boot. If not, then I gotta fix it here. Huh. Alright, cool. Alright, so yeah, I just had to hit uh, hit it again, so now it's putting it to VMware. So pretty basic, doesn't take very long. I mean, it only took me a couple minutes to get this going, so. I mean, this you know, loading VMware and getting the hardware configured is pretty much the easy part. But uh, yeah, then I got to load all the VMware and uh, do the conversion. So I'm going to be loading probably about four to five servers on this one uh, on one server here. So 
Alright. So from here I'm going to hit continue. And F11 to accept. Scan, scan for the hard drives. And that should be it, the three. So uh, the f first one is the mirrored uh, drives and the other ones are just the individuals. the camera can see that like I said I can't really tell from here confirm install and install so yeah I'll show the installation of this thing but I put it into a massive colo this is gonna it's not gonna off it's gonna like a massive data center it's called CenturyLink and um, I'll show you the server that's it's gonna replace a bunch of uh, like uh, HP servers like the older school, like the SCSI servers, like the like Gen 2, Gen 1 HP servers. All right, cool. It took a couple minutes. Done installing. I mean, actually, I just sat here like within a couple seconds from the last clip. This was finished. So, hit return. It's gonna reboot. I'm gonna have to give it a static IP address, and uh, then I'll log into vSphere, and uh, I'm gonna copy over some uh, ISO files, like Windows 2012 R2, and. Uh, CentOS, Linux, and a couple of other ISOs, but all right, cool. Hopefully, there's less flare now, but uh, I'm gonna just uh, I'll log in and uh, gotta change the uh, give a static IP address so I can copy some files over here. I guess I can, uh, I guess eventually this will be a, uh, I guess I can just keep this IP address. Because eventually it's going to be a, a different public static IP address. So 1.100, so that's what it got. From the DHP server. So now I can just log in and uh, upload some ISOs. So pretty basic. Okay guys, I don't know why this video is just like a half-half. Okay, as you can see on the screen, I'm going to log in for the 192.168.1.100. That's the DHCP server address the uh, server picked up. This is the first time I've ever logged into this thing. So you hit the ignore on the uh, encryption key. Because, I mean, you can, if it's up to you, if you want to upload a real SSL key, you don't have to. All right, I'm going to show you where this is. It says my license expired. So I'm going to go to it's under configuration and by the way ESXi is free so you know whatever the key is the key you don't have to steal this key you can just get download from their website so yeah, no, reason, no reason to steal the key from me so um warning Okay, we're fine. We gotta do a reboot, but okay. So now I need to upload some ISO files to this thing so I can uh, install Windows 2012 R2. So I'm gonna make a web server, a SQL server, and a backup domain controller. So I have data stores here, browse, and I'm gonna create a new folder called ISO. And this is where I'm gonna download all my ISOs. And we'll go into that folder. And let's see, I should have a link here to my should I get to from my network camera upload. Upload file. And I'm going to go here. So as you can see, this is actually my network. So network, so this this is the real location on my network. 
you know, backslash file server program ISO Windows 2012. So that's the file I need. And yes. So in this other screen, it's copying another file. And uh, in the next step, I'll uh, show you how to create a virtual machine and get this thing installed. So pretty basic, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, virtual virtualization is awesome. You know, for for many years I tried to deny it. You know, I was so my, had my mindset on you know every server it needs to be dedicated to server for everything. You know, and yeah, you know, it really is actually awesome. You know, I mean just the power savings alone. You know, I, I used to run like twelve servers in my office, uh, just test servers for diff different Cisco phone system testing and Elastix and or, you know, Asterisk and all different kinds of email servers and stuff and web servers and. I mean, able to get that down into two servers. So I mean, I mean, just for me alone, it, it saves me three hundred dollars a month of power. So pretty cool. All right, all right, back here. So ISO is copied over. I'm gonna create a new virtual machine. And typical. This is gonna be called SQL six. And Default data store, Windows 2012 R2, and I'm gonna use a uh, VXM NEC3. That's that's actually better. It's uh, <clears throat> I've actually had better. I mean, I've had better performance with this NEC than the other NECs. Basically, the other ones are emulating the old uh, Intel-based uh, Gigabit NECs. That's what the E1000 means, but. That's uh, this is the enhanced version of the VMware NIC. Right. I'm gonna do a thick layered, a uh, 200 gig. Thin would be uh, if I didn't want to actually. Uh, I only wanted actually. A thick actually dedicates 200 gig, and, and uses up 200 gig, so it totally 100% dedicates 200 gig to what I'm doing. But a thin provision basically. We only use up what you're what you're using. So if you're, in, it, I, I could say it's 200 gig, but if I'm only using 34 gig on the install, then it's only going to show up 34 gig on the actual uh, usage. But uh, this is actually a customer server, and they uh, want thick provisions. So I'm going to go fetch now. Once it's installed and created, I'm going to go back hit edit settings, and I'm going to give this uh, 24 gig of RAM. There's 64 gig in this server, and I'm gonna do uh, four four cores sockets. I'll make it every. I'll get more into this. It's actually kind of comp. It's not really that complicated, but the difference between virtual sockets and, and cores. Well, a, a socket is considered a CPU socket. You know, like, like the socket, like the CPU socket, and the cores are actually the cores per so cores per CPU. I don't know. Um, network adapter. And for CD-ROM, I want to choose the ISO I just created, which is in data store. Hi, my dad got mine. Oh, sorry, that's my kid. Right. Okay. Okay. I want to connect on power on. And now I'm going to open the console. And power this on, and the shit automatically boot into the Windows installation. There it goes, loading files. Yeah, this is so much. This is, I mean, <clears throat> once I get this in the data center and I have all my ISOs uploaded, this thing, I can just basically create servers on the fly. You know, so it's, uh, I don't have to physically be there to install these servers. I mean, I can just do, I uh, put them in the colo and do them remotely. All right, next. And, this is not going to be this is not going to be installation tutorial for Windows 2000, but this is basically it. Pretty simple. All right, cool. Hopefully this helps everybody. Give me questions or if you need help installing uh, VMware. All right, thanks.